Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 200 and something of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and uh, if you're watching the video version, you might notice something very special, uh, and uh, that is, uh, I, I don't have a camera, it's audio only, sorry, fuck you, uh, Luke has my camera because he's filming his shows. My shows, by the way, start in two weeks, uh, get your tickets at lewspears.com, some of them have sold out already, uh, they're going fast, get your fucking tickets. We did the trial show uh, on Thursday night for the Patreon supporters only. Just one of the many perks you get by chucking me a couple of bucks. You get to see secret shows for five bucks so we can fucking pay Keel and make sure the bar gets a bit of money in, in their pocket. But not me! That comes from you. Um, dude, the trial show was fucking great. Uh, I'm good. I don't know uh, if, if you've heard this from anyone. I'm sure you've heard it from a lot of people, but I'm fucking good at stand-up, man. I think, man, weirdly, I think the break of from stand-up has made me come back better. I thought I was going to come back way worse. The first few gigs were real rough and weird. I felt like a robot. But once I got back to being natural, dude, the, the new bits I've been working on are so much fucking better. I caned it. And it was the trial show. Uh, I mean, some of the jokes didn't work. I'm not going to lie. There was one joke in particular about my cat that just came across as way too fucked. You know, like just too much. Uh, I got about halfway into the joke, about a minute into it, and people were like, ah, this guy seems like he's going to actually kill the cat. So I'm going to have to, I, I think I'm going to scrap that one. Uh, and I realized that it's maybe not a joke, more so just me screaming about wanting to murder an animal. Uh, so that's that feedback was taken on board. The feedback presented to me uh, in the form of silence. But other than that, Dude, I murdered. It was fucking great. The 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 trial show confirmed that this material is killer. I cannot wait to do it properly and, and meet everybody afterwards and do all of that. So lewspears.com, thank you to all the Patreon supporters who came out to the came out to the secret trial show. And uh, yeah, it was fucking awesome. I'm in South Melbourne. It's gonna be sweet. I'm doing 23 shows. It sounds like a lot of shows, but uh, tickets are very limited because COVID and, and all that kind of stuff. All right. So, uh, look, I've had, uh, I've had a very uh, good week. I hope you have as well. Um, a very busy week. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the first week of Luke and Lewis. That's been going crazy. Uh, the feedback on, on the, the two new episodes in the brand new studio has been really great. I can finally reveal that we're working with Mis the Misfits Management Group. Um, they're handling the Luke and Lewis podcast, uh, but we're still very much independent. We own everything. We haven't, you know, taken money or there's no rules um, or anything like that. They just kind of believe in the show and uh, want to start uh, helping us out. So it's uh, that's what's happening. It's it's very cool and and uh, I'm excited, man. I think it's fucking great. I reckon we'll be able to have proper guests. Because, you know, we've always had, like, uh, the the opportunity to have, like, you know, we had Andrew Schultz was a big get. Uh, but there's been plenty of other people we could have gotten uh, that we just didn't because we didn't want to invite them to Frankston. You know what I mean? Like, you can't invite fucking Jerry Seinfeld to Frankston. Not that we would ever get him on the show. But if, if there was, it, like, if by some fucking miracle I, I could ever, I ever met fucking Jerry Seinfeld, you know? Like, for example, you know, if I met, when I met Joe Rogan, um, I just comes up in conversation, you know, oh, you got a podcast, dude? I was like, yeah, man, you should come down one day. And then if I invited him, I would have spent the next six years pulling my own fucking hair out going, if he ever takes me up on that offer, which he won't, but if he ever does, I'm going to have to go come down to Frankston, man, and he's going to Google it on Google Maps, and before it... It uh, sends you uh, uh, directions on how to get to Frankston. A little uh, warning pops up that says, uh, are you, how likely are you to survive a stab wound? And uh, if you kind of, if you're in the bottom 30% of of, per, of people who would survive stab wounds, Google Maps won't, actually won't take you there. So uh, it's good to now be in an area that is not a shithole and it's actually good and we can invite guests and shit from uh, there. Um so that's great, and we're grateful to the Misfits Management Group, and uh, yeah, that's cool. That's all happening. That's exciting. Uh, and uh, yeah, man, that's that's been my whole week, other than all of these fucking jaw uh, specialists and fucking uh, MMA surgeons and, and all these nose and throat doctors to fix my sleep apnea due to my fucked recessed jaw. So I finally... 
And I'm not going to say too many things because I have a killer joke about this that fucking crushed the other night. Uh, but I finally uh, got onto the guy who would actually seem to do the surgery. So where we left off last, I was getting x-rays. Um, I had to go to this fucking like uh, head x-ray place. I go in there. Uh, I fucking uh, have to do the check-in thing. They sent the, the map sends me to one spot. I go in through the back door. It's got a big check-in thing on the back of the door. So I fucking check in through my phone. Uh, and I, I'm like 70% sure that I did it properly. You know how those things go, right? You fucking, you, you scan the thing and then there's like 30 different locations to sign up to and say you're at. You could fucking, you know, you could be in Melbourne and just click, oh, I'm in Blackburn. And he'd be like, yeah, all right. Then some, then some cunt will die of COVID and then you get a text to quarantine because they reckon you've been in the Blackburn fucking KFC, right? Anyway, so I do that and I fucking sign up and then I go to the receptionist and I'm wearing my mask, which I love, love to wear a mask. Uh, and then she goes, oh, have you signed in? Uh, she goes, can you sign in for me? And I'm like, yep. And she can't really fucking hear me because of the mask. And also she's sitting down and I'm standing up. We might as well be on the other end of the room. If you're sitting down and I'm standing up and we're talking, we're in different continents. I'm 6'8". I'm you sitting down is like four foot three. It's, it doesn't work. We're too far away. I have enough fucking problems talking to short women after shows. If, you, hey, if you're listening to this and you're like under five foot five and you're a woman... Bring a fucking stepladder if you want to talk to me after the show, all right? I, I love you, and I'm, I'm always happy to talk to the fans, but for fuck's sake, I can't hear you. If you're under 5'3", I cannot hear you. The amount of times I've had conversations with female fans after shows that come up to literally my waist, and, and, and all I do is go, <laughs> yeah, do you want a photo? And then they go, can't hear you. You're too far away. I don't know what's happening. I used to think I had fucking hearing issues, and then I then I started talking to tall bitches. I'm like, oh no, they're just closer. Short women are too far away for me. Anyway, so I'm talking to this woman, or she's talking to me. I'm not processing anything she's saying. She goes, "Can you sign in?" I'm like, "Yes." Signing in, uh, and I've already I've already signed in. Sorry. So she goes, uh, "Can you sign in?" And I heard, "Have you signed in?" So I just go, "Yep." Yeah. And then she. Watches me say yes to can you sign in and then do nothing. And she's like, so you need to sign in. I said, yeah, yes. Because I'm still hearing, have you signed in? So I'm still going, yes. So she says, you need to sign in. I hear, have you signed in? I say, yes. She hears yes. And I look like a fucking liar. Because she's asking me to sign in. I keep saying yes and not doing it. She goes, sir, you need to do it. I'm like, I've, I've, it's done. I've done it. And she goes, show me. So I show her the fucking thing. She goes, well, that was fast. Like thinking that I just fudged the thing. It's like, bitch, why the, what, if I was one of these anti-masker cunts, would this be my hill to die on in the fucking lobby of an x-ray appointment? This is where I, this is where I want to have my fucking moment, my Facebook live moment, wearing a mask. That's my big protest, is not filling in the fucking check-in form correctly. I did it on the front door. I show her, and she goes, did you do it properly? I said, yes. And she goes, how come it was so quick? I said, it wasn't quick, I did it at the front door. And she goes, oh, you did it at the front door? I said, yes. She goes, oh, okay, sorry, my bad. Take the sign down if you want to watch me fucking do it. Um, Anyway... So, uh, that was a trivial thing that annoyed me way more than it should have. And then I get into the fucking x-ray. Um, and, uh, I go in and then the, the, the woman, new woman, doctor, right? Someone with a fucking doctor's certificate or whatever. I don't know. X-ray bitch. Go and talk to her and I'm too tall for the fucking head scanning machine, right? Because normally it, you just stand in it. But I'm too fucking tall. So that she goes, oh, I'm going to need to find you a chair. And then she brings in a chair. Uh, and then I sit down in it. And then she turns the machine on. And then it starts moving towards the x-ray machine. She goes, oh, my bad. That's a metal chair. I'm, I can't do that because it's metal. And the x ray's magnetic. I'm like, oh, great. Well, that I could have died. Thank you. So then she comes out. She brings out this fucking other chair that also doesn't work. And then she goes, can you just bend down? I said, oh, yeah, all right. 
Fuck, I thought I was getting a, a, a head x-ray, not a prostate exam, but I'll bend over for you, doctor. Um, and so I do that, and she puts my head in it, and it's like this, this, it's like, the, it's like forceps. It's like fucking tongs, except on either side of my head, and then the, the, there's little points that go in my ear. And she goes, oh, I need to put these in your ears. I'm like, no worries. And I wait for her to get like, uh, you know, when you go to the dentist and they have to put something in your mouth, he makes a big show of getting out the brand new utensils from the sanitized plastic bag. And then after he's done, he makes a big show of putting those tools in the bin, never to be used again. I'm waiting for that shit to happen. Uh, And while I'm waiting for her to get the clean, sanitized ear, bud, whatever the fuck things uh, to put on the machine so that my ear isn't contaminated with the other cunt who's got brain cancer or whatever the fuck he's getting a head x-ray for, uh, his ears, right? And then while I'm thinking, oh, where, where's she going to pull those from? She just sticks it in my ear. I'm like, oh, great. Great. So now I've got, now I've got the, I've got the fucking earwax of 10,000 other cunts. It's probably fucking radioactive too by this point. It's been blasted in the microwave that many times by the x-ray machine. I'm, I'm probably going to get, I'm probably going to get either 10,000 times smarter or, uh, or brain cancer. So I'm looking forward to that. That'll, that'll either be my super villain arc because Lord knows I'm not going to be, become a fucking hero. You know, like what, like why would you become a superhero if your power is is being smart like you can't really do anything with being smart can you you can't do anything that benefits the world oh cool you could be elon musk and invent cars boring i would rather like just fuck with the uh the economy of like a really small nation like how good would that be if you were just so smart you could completely understand geopolitics uh and and economics to a point where you could just rock up uh, at at some like weird shithole third world country and just turn it into a superpower. How good would that be? You know, like you just rock up in Myanmar and you're like, guess what? Here's the here's the formula for nukes. And they go, what about uranium? You go, don't need it. I've invented a nuke that just uses fucking clay. And they're like, oh fuck. You know, that's why they're having a revolution at the moment because I gave them the formula for nukes to be made with clay. Anyway enough rambling i don't know if that bit was funny or if it was the the radioactive brain cancer talking but it amused me somewhat anyway so i'm getting my you can, you can't you can hear i can't even fucking breathe which i'm gonna get to right uh i get my scans and then i go to a few weeks later i go to the 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 jaw surgeon he's a guy that specializes in this fucking uh surgery and let me tell you the waiting room was packed full of people dozens of people not a single chin in sight there's there would have to be at least 12 people there and absolutely zero chins everyone in that place other than the receptionist and the doctor had the most fucked chin of all time. Non-existent. Everyone in there looked like a Phineas and Ferb character. Not a single fucking chin in sight. That's how I knew I'm in the right place. I'm like, fuck yeah, this guy has obviously had a lot of practice. Some of these cunts, I saw their teeth before their chin. Those people with the overbites. So he does that. Jaw advancement surgery. So he's... I go in his office and he has the x-rays. Uh, and again, it's this is all part of a joke that I'm doing. So I'm not going to reveal too much. But basically, he thinks that I need the surgery. I'm like, okay, cool. So... Uh, but I need... Th- I need... I thought... Going in and doing all my research, I thought that I needed MMA surgery. And that is where if you put your fingers on your on your chin and you move them halfway up your jaw, right? Halfway point on your jaw. Imagine, you see that feel that bone there either side, halfway point between your jaw and then like the hinge, your chin and the hinge rather. This halfway point. Imagine a doctor applying a buzz saw to this. 
and cutting it in half and then moving it forward and then using metal plates and a drill to fucking connect the two pieces that he just cut in half, but far away. So in the meantime, there's no bone in between them, but there's just that metal, and then eventually the bone will regrow. That's what I thought I needed, and I do need that, but he also thinks that the inside of my mouth is too small. I'm not getting enough air in. So I have asthma, but this may be making the asthma symptoms far worse because I can't breathe properly uh, at all, apparently, my whole life. My jaw is so far back that my tongue muscle, all of my tongue, which just goes so far back in your mouth, that's uh, covering most of my airway. So my airway, looking at the x-ray, is about four times smaller than the average person, which is fucking insane for a person that talks and yells and screams for a living. So he reckons not only do they they need to smash my jaw and move it forward, that's MMA. He also needs to break my chin and move that forward. And he wants to do a second surgery where he takes the top part of my fucking jaw, breaks it in half and widens it to let more air in and to have like a normal fucking mouth cavity. And uh, I'm going to look fucking completely different um i'm gonna have like the whole bottom half of my face is gonna get rearranged literally everything from cheekbones down is getting smashed and moved so i'm gonna have the whole bottom half of my face is gonna be more flat and uh and broad and then i'm gonna have this giant giga chad chin i'm gonna look like the fucking crimson chin i'm gonna look like that uh What's that uh, that super villain in fucking is it Happy Town? What's that TV show the guy he, had, he died of brain cancer? Happy Town. It's not that. It's not called Happy Town. It's like uh fucking Oh, what's that uh I don't know. You guys know the show. The guy that was the meme, the backflip dude. Oh no, backflip villain. Now I can't fucking no, backflip villain, children's show. It's called something town. Lazy town. Yeah, fucking lazy town. I can't believe I googled that by going backflip villain children's show. My Google foo is immaculate, unstoppable, untouchable. And, uh, according to the nose and throat doctor, I also need a fucking rhinoplasty on my nose to open that up so I can breathe. I can't breathe. I've got no air. Maybe that's why I'm fucking so stupid. I've got no oxygen going to my brain. For fuck's sake, man. So he reckons I'm going to look completely different. And I'm going to sound way different. Way less nasally. Which when he said in the doctor's office, I was like, What, you think I'm nasally? You think I... And I'd only met the cunt for two minutes. I barely said a word. He goes, and you're going to sound much less nasally. I'm like, fuck. Am I nasally? I guess, I guess I am. So anyway, but before these surgeries, right? This is the, the, the surgeries are going to be great. I've, I've had a lot of people reach out who had the same surgery and, and dear God, every single person I've got a message from guys and girls, it seems like a really common surgery because something about our faces is fucked probably because of a diet. We only eat soft foods. Um, so we don't have the muscles and the jaws that we should have or used to, right? Every, I'm telling you, bro, every single person who has messaged me and gone, Hey Lewis, I had this surgery. It's great. Recovery time is about 10 days, which shocks me that you'll be back to normal about 10 days. You'll have a little bit of swelling, but you can talk and eat. They can, they unwire your jaw. Everyone's going, the surgery's great. Everyone's saying best thing I ever did. I haven't had a single person who's messaged me and gone, it was terrible. The, but And that's great. But the most striking thing about every person messaging me is, bro, guys and girls, every cunt who's had this surgery is just the most beautiful person I've ever seen. One girl messaged me and she had a jawline so sharp you could use it to eat steak with. 
Like when she goes to a fucking steak restaurant, they don't give her cutlery. She cuts that shit with her chin and then she chews it. She cuts with the outside of her fucking jaw and then with the inside of it, she chews it. Another dude messaged me and he goes, hey dude, I had the surgery. And then I immediately scroll to see some fucking before pictures. I went back years. I'm like, what did this cunt look like before the surgery? Horrific. Worse than me. I don't think, I, I think, I don't think I'm a, a bad looking guy. I don't think it's like visually that bad. I think on the inside, it's much more fucked up. But I, I, I think I'm fine, right? I'm not an ugly, I know I'm not super hot, but I don't think I'm an ugly person. Bro, this dude was fucking ugly. Real bad. And then I looked at his profile picture that he has today. Dude, the cunt looks like Captain America. He looks like he walked out of a fucking film. This surgery is going to completely change my face in a good way. And when it does, I promise you, it is over. It's over for you. You, dear listener. You have from now, right? Because it's all in motion. I've got private health insurance. It's already begun. You cannot stop me. This is this is my supervillain speech. I've got private health cover. As soon as my 12 months are up, it's over for you. 18 months from today, you will be single. Motherless. Fuck, I'll even take your grandma. I'm going to take some of your boyfriends. I'm, I won't fuck them. I'll send them home, but they won't love you as much. Because they will have seen my face. And they will understand what they're missing out on. And, and, and my rejection of their advances will crush their spirit and soul so much that they will not be able to love you like they used to. And I'm really sorry about that, but it's just how it's going to be. It's over for you. I'm going to be fucking six foot eight, funny, successful, and finally handsome. It's all over for you. That being said, for 18 months, and I did confirm this with the surgeon, 18 months before the surgery, I, Lewis Spears, the 27-year-old, Adult male with no license must have braces. <laughs> Fuck! I gotta get braces, bro. He's literally he's sending me. I go, oh, so when do we do the surgery? When my private health will cover it in a year? And he goes, nah. After your teeth are moved by an orthodontist. I'm like, oh, is that another surgery? And he goes, nah, that's braces. Fuck, I'd rather die in my sleep. Adult braces for 18 months as a comedian and a YouTuber, it's over. It's over for me. Oh, fuck. You guys are going to have a great 18 months. You're going to have a fucking field day in the comment section for 18 months. And, And I'll let you laugh. I'll let you laugh because... It will be the last 18 months you ever get to laugh at me. Because as soon as I get those braces off, dude, you don't understand. I'm going to have a whole new face. They're going to fix up my ridge. (laughs) Probably against my will. I'm going to have a whole new jaw and perfect teeth. Like, really, really look deep within yourself. You know it's over. For you, like you really, you need to understand, you must on some primal level understand that when I get a new face, new teeth, and I sound less annoying, less nasally, you're finished. How can you compete? What? You've got a, you've got a shining personality? Okay. And how far has that got you so far? No, I'm actually, I don't know. I don't know how, uh, I, I don't know if I am going to look heaps, I, you know, I guess I will. I will look heaps different. Because I I thought it was just going to be my chin. You know, all that stuff about me being more handsome, it's a joke. But I will look different, you know. Like my chin's going to come forward. And then and then I guess apparently the whole front of my face is coming forward. And my I'm going to have straight teeth. So I see the orthodontist in a couple of weeks and fuck man, I am just really, really desperate 
to know whether or not I can do uh, Invisalign. Bro, if I can do, I if I have to have fucking adult braces, can't. Bitcoin better explode because I won't work for eighteen months. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna start buying lottery tickets now, I, I, just in case I have to fucking get braces. I'll disappear. I'll just I'll I'll do that. I'm gonna disappear. Go in, literally. I'm gonna go into if I have to get adult braces. I'm gonna go into a cocoon. I'm gonna disappear. For 18 months, I won't even say goodbye. I'll just post my last video, and then you won't see me. And after three weeks, you'll be like, ah, he's probably, he's done this before. Three weeks, no uploading. Bit weird that he hasn't tweeted, you know, something obscene and inflammatory. But, you know, I guess, you know, he deserves a break. He's been working hard. He just finished his tour. His Melbourne Comedy Festival shows are over. You know, he deserves a little break. Five weeks will come by. You'll be like, ah... Yeah, he's been going a while. Two months will go by, and then and then you'll realize, oh fuck, he's cocooning. Oh no, the man's gone into a cocoon. I gotta, I've I've got if he's been gone for two months, I've got about sixteen months. What's that? One year, four months. I've got until fuck about September, twenty twenty two, to enjoy life with my girlfriend. Before I have to let it go. You know? Like you'll just come to the realization that life is precious and finite. Because, you know, enjoy those dates. Take it to Nobu. She, you, you know, memories that'll last forever. They'll last longer than, re- than the relationship. Which, I mean, and that's out of my control. It's not her fault either. She's going to see me with a brand new chin, new jawline. Whole, whole fucking everything, lower half of the face redone, new teeth. I gotta, I'll have a big, strong, aquiline nose, no ridge. I'll be able to breathe through my nose, so you know I'll, I'll be eating pussy. Because you know she listens to me breathe through my nose now. She goes, he's not eating pussy. <laughs> Or if he tries, he's gonna pass out. He needs a fucking scuba suit to eat pussy. A CPAP machine to go down on me. Can't have that. But as soon as, soon as you know, as soon as she sees me step foot out of that fucking hospital and the swelling goes down and the braces are gone and the air travels through my nose and into my lungs as seamlessly as the sea. An ocean breeze. It's over. For you. And that's not her fault. And I will get to her. In time, I'm a gentleman. She can take a number. Back of the line. You know? Everyone will be seen to. But you must have patience. You could accompany her in the line. You know, there'll be a few days. A few days of wait. You, that could be your last day, you know? And then when it gets to her number, 32,459, section B, you will know it's time to say goodbye. And she'll be sad, a little bit, but she'll also be excited. And, and you'll be sad, but you'll also know it's just the way things are. It's the way of life. It's how nature works. Everyone's on top until they're not. And I'm going to be going straight to the top. I'm excited for it, man. This sleep apnea stuff has been really fucking me. I, uh... (laughs) I I woke up on Friday. Jazz looks at me and she goes, you look like a corpse. (laughs) You look like you've been suffocating all night. I'm like, oh, it's because I am, I think. So I'm excited to get it done. I, I I have the orthodontist in a couple of weeks, and I'm pretty sure that's the last guy I have to see. And then I will get my, uh, either get adult fucking braces or, dear God, hopefully I'll be able to do Invisalign. I don't know. 
It's like, you know, if you move your jaw, if you, you know, with your mouth, listen to this, if you, if you move your chin forward, you can't close your mouth right. That's what he's doing to me. It moves your whole bottom row of teeth, obviously. Um, so uh, you need, I don't know if Invisalign can do that. It might be too much of a, too big of a job to move my whole fucking horseshoe up top forward. And then maybe also the whole bottom horseshoe in a different position so that my mouth will close. It seems like a big job for Invisalign. I won't be surprised if the guy's like, yeah, you need fucking braces. And then you guys are going to have a field day. But it'll be, hopefully it'll be worth it because I'll be able to fucking sleep. Dude, if if I can manage to be this productive while literally actually in real world sleeping, maybe about four hours a night and then suffocating the other fucking four... It's more like sleeping two hours and choking for six. <laughs> and then and then throughout the day, falling asleep. But whatever. I'm excited. Let's talk about something else. I had a driver's lesson. What the fuck? How can I drop that on you? I had a driver's lesson. Uh, first one uh, in uh, over a year, I think. My plan was, and it was a solid plan, when COVID hit during lockdown, I'll get my license. I'll go driving... Every week, there's nothing else to do. That was illegal. So I had to wait till that was over. And then, of course, when that when that was over, I was incredibly busy. So now I've just, I booked it in like once a week. And I'm doing it once a week. I got on the roads, which was good. I was, do, I, I uh, was fucking switching lanes, doing head checks, indicating, uh, going way too fast. And then him telling me to slow down and then me slamming on the brakes. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I don't think I'm going to be a very good driver. I don't think I'm going to kill anyone, but I do think I am absolutely going to be that guy who people kind of laugh at when he tries his to parallel park for the 17th time in the same spot and then gives up to find a different park, even though he knows he's not going to find one in that area. You know, that's going to be me. Is that cunt who tries to parallel park? I'm just going to look. Hopefully, you know, when I, when I get my new face, I'll get a modeling contract for a few million dollars. I'll get a Tesla. It'll drive itself. Problem solved. Um, but if that doesn't happen, I'm, I am going to be that guy on the roads. You know, all these people have been making fun of me for my whole life or ever since I turned 16 for not driving, not getting my license. But what you guys don't realize is that when I do get my license, that means I'm going to be on the roads. So you may die. You know, I won't, I won't, I won't kill you, but we might get into a bingle. I will, I'll say that. I will get into a little bingle, you know? I might run over your dog. Not on purpose, of course. But it can happen. No, I feel good. I actually, you know, I don't know. I, I think I uh, have... I think I'm, I'm a much better driver than I thought I was. Um, I didn't really fuck up. And I told the instructor, I just want to start from zero. I've started and stopped this process so many times. I want to start from zero. Treat me like I've never driven before. He goes, all right, cool. So we get in, we start going out, and then he just takes me on the roads, and I'm doing fine. Um, so there was like traffic and traffic lights and all that kind of stuff. So that was fine. Uh, I think the the I think I hate the idea of learning to drive. I like the idea of driving. I hate the idea of being taught. It's a big personality flaw of mine. But I also think it's 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 because I had I literally did have a real horrible run with like a series of very bad driving instructors starting off with my parents mum got in the car with me the first time i drove and she almost had a fucking panic attack my brother also got his license really late because my parents are horrific driving instructors my dad uh has he's like a tradie so he has a big truck and that's just absolutely fucked to learn in um which is whatever but i get over that but i got in the car with him for the first time i ever drove he said nothing he didn't tell me to do anything. He gave me no instruction. He was so nervous, he shut down. He didn't know what to say. He hadn't, He was like, oh, I'll, oh, yeah, I can be your... I'll help you learn to drive. He didn't put any thought into thinking. Love him to death. Poor guy. I could see myself doing that. He just shut down. I'm like, well, that sucked. I'll go with mum. I get him with mum the next fucking week. She starts having a panic attack the minute I turn on the engine. Freaking me out. And they did the same shit to my brother. So he got his really late, but he had to get it before me because uh, he do- he needs it, right? He's also a tradie. I never, I never, ever needed a car. Truly, I never needed it until I lived here, moved out. Now I need a car. I do need to drive. 
I gotta go to fucking Misfit Studio. I gotta perform every fucking night. Uh, and I'm in Frankston, so I don't want to be around that station. You know? So, then, after, I was like, okay, well, my parents suck, and they don't want to teach me. Mum hated it, so I'm like, alright, well, I need to get lessons from an instructor. So I go to fucking RACV, and I do the thing online, and I get an instructor, and this guy rocks up, and my my first driver's lesson, I think I've told the story before, but I'm freaking out. It's my first ever lesson. I'm only 17, I think, or maybe I'm 18 at this point. I can't remember. Young, right? Drew up my driver's lesson, freaking out, trying not to crash. And then he goes, oh, there's like a, a, a birthday party going on on the street and these people are crossing the road. So I'm like slowing down and being cautious. And then he goes, hey, stop, 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 stop. And then we stop. And he goes, all right, now slowly and move over to the left. And I don't understand why he's telling me to do this because there's no traffic. There's no car coming the other way. I, I assume he sees something that I don't, some kind of hazard. I'm like, all right. So I move into the left. Uh, in a place where I don't think I'm supposed to be, but whatever, he's the instructor. And he goes, all right, now slow down. Uh, and he goes, now look to your left. I'm like, uh, and he goes, just look to your left now. And I look over uh, and he goes, how hot is she? Look at her. And I'm like, uh, I don't even see the woman. I'm fucking, I don't know. And then he goes, look at her legs. The cunt got me to fucking slow down the car and pull over so he could perv on a woman. That was my third driving lesson. So I think I had a bad experience with learning to drive and it's stuck in my brain ever since. And then that combined with, with where I lived, I was just surrounded by public transport. I literally didn't need it. It was always faster to go to work and to the, and to the city by train. So I never needed it. Uh, and now I'm in Frankston and I'm paying the price. Literally, it's $60 a lesson. Fuck! Uh, but I'm excited. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think I'll be able to knock it out this year. Although, I have said this every year, literally since 2012. I will say that. I've definitely said that I would get my license this year. I mean, for fuck's sake, some of you uh, in, uh, entrepreneurial listeners could probably go through the back catalog of the Spearhead Sundays podcast and find me saying that. Every year since probably, when did this show fucking start? 2014, whenever it started, you go through every fucking episode, you could find me saying, I'm going to get my license this year. I've definitely said it before. And I, and you know what's, what's really fucked is I have meant it as much as I mean it right now. I wasn't lying back then when I said I was going to get it this year. I wasn't lying. I truly believed it with all my heart and soul. It wasn't a lie. It just turned out to be false. You know when you do one of those, like you make a promise, and it, and 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 you weren't lying at the time, but uh, circumstances prove you to be one. That's me. So, look, let's uh, let's get into miscellaneous bit at the end here, shall we? I don't want to fucking talk about the Royals. Oh, boo hoo! They're not giving me security. All right, cunt. No one gets security. Oh, she's calling us a racist. Really? You you want us to believe that the royal family isn't racist? You want, to, you want to believe that any royal family is not racist? A family that is like obsessed, obsessed with fucking bloodlines and staying pure and titles and family tree. You reckon that not one of those cunts is a little bit concerned with uh, the percentage of blue or white blood? Hmm. Who cares? They're a fucking tourism ad anyway. How dare she disrespect the royal family? What have they done for you? Huh? Did they ever knock on your door? When your power went out? And they give you a little space heater? No! They're the royal family. They took money from you and didn't let you in their house to see the shit that you paid for. Fuck them. Get that bitch off my money. Um, anyway, if you need some life advice or if you have a question for me, uh, shoot an email to podcast at uh, and just let me know. Make it short and uh, I'll do my best to answer it podcast at com. are you kidding oh no
Where am I? Podcast at lucebeers.com. I don't want to look at... Oh, okay. Here we go. All right. This one coming in from Corey. Moving to Frankston. Hey, Lewis. I'm looking at moving to Frankston within the next two weeks. And I was wondering if you have any advice on places to look for or places to stay away from. Now, obviously, Frankston has made the name for itself, but I don't fully buy into it being as terrible as everyone says that it is. But as with everything, there is always a little bit of truth behind each stereotype. Any advice will be great. Have a shit one, Corey. Yeah, look, okay. As someone who lives in Frankston, I'll tell you this. And I do a joke about this in my show, so I'm going to try and not cross wires or fucking repeat myself. Um... Frankston is like, uh, it's, it's a, it's, it's, it's going to be nice. It's one of those places that definitely used to be exclusively shit, but it's becoming nice. It's transitioning, basically. Um, there's heaps and heaps of young families here. Uh, there's, uh, a, definitely a lot of ratty people and still a lot of crime, but it's gotten heaps, heaps better. And, uh, I have never felt unsafe. Uh, I would avoid, uh, Frankston Station, especially at night, um, I would avoid really the city center. City center is pretty safe. The, the, the shopping center is nice. It has everything. Um, and honestly, it depends on the street you're on. Frankston's such a weird area where it's, it truly is. It's like literally gentrifying. It's in that fucking process. It's weird to see. I've only ever seen Nice suburbs or shitholes. I've never seen a mix. And and right now, Frankston is a mix of a bad place and a good place. You go down one street, it's beautiful young families, amazing homes. You go down the street next to it, it's dilapidated shacks falling apart. Uh, and uh, you're gonna... And, and when you go to the shopping center, like the city little... They try. They say it's a CBD. It's not a fucking CBD. Maybe CBD oil is floating around, but I wouldn't call it a central business district. Um, that you see the mix. So you'll see young families, you'll see fucking well-off people, and then you'll see like homeless people and crackheads and eshes and, and ratty teen mums, and they're all in the same spot, and there's cops everywhere, so it's it's pretty safe. Uh, I would just avoid uh, places at night, to be honest. Um, but that's kind of common sense. Like if, if you just have street smarts and you just stay safe, don't wear luxury clothing. Don't fucking flash shit around. Be aware of your surroundings. You'll be fine. Um, it's it's truly like I haven't I've never seen anything that's made me feel unsafe. I mean I'm a big scary guy, so that factors into it. But to be honest, man, if you if you just look around a few streets, I would say if you're planning on moving here, pick what street you move into carefully. Because I'm in a beautiful one, and there's never been anything fucked, but a couple streets down there's some fucked ones. You just need to have a look around the area, and 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 you'll you'll instantly realize this is a good place, this is a bad place. Um, but honestly, I love this place. I think it's great, and I think it's going to become amazing. Um, it's just that I don't know. It's just that sad fucking reality of uh, every time a place is up and coming, rich people buy up all of the houses. Uh, and at the moment, the rent is is pretty cheap, which is why I'm here. But that'll change, and then all of the poor people will get pushed even further out. Uh, and that's happening to Frankston. So it's like you know, I'm saying it like it's a good thing. But uh, look, it's a good thing for me. It's not so much a good thing for the people who've lived here their whole lives and might not have too much money. So, but that's that's the world. Um, so enjoy that. All right. I would yeah. I would just say. Uh, Keep your wits about you, and also those those bars and pubs uh, in in the CBD. There's like a there's like a uh, there's like an intersection that has on each corner. There's four corners, and every corner there's a pub, and you just see that at night people just go from one to the other to the other. And then if you're not in a pub, you're probably in a fight. <laughs> like, that's that's what it is. You 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 leave one pub and to get across the road you got to run the gauntlet of what the fuck are you looking at? Can I have a dollar or oh, you fucking dog can't? Woohoo! So you know if you can make it through that without getting bashed you'll be fine. But I personally avoid them. Um. All right, where are we? Uh.
having a look here. Um, hi, Lewis. I think my friend is addicted to stealing. This will be the last one. Um, hey, Lewis. My name is Sam. Recently, my friend has been going through some mental health stuff and has been going on loan drives by himself to help clear his head. Last month, he pl- he passed through a town literally called Kuminya. C O O M I N Y A. Kuminya. Come in ya. Come in your ass. I didn't believe him until he sent me a picture of him posing in front of the main sign and it got a good chuckle. Fast forward to a couple of weeks ago, I got a message from him saying, I want to do something fucking stupid and being the enabler I am, I happily agreed, which is, which you should do. You know, if you're young, if you're, if you're under 22, you can do a lot of crimes and get away with it. And even if you do get caught, you get a slap on the wrist. If it's your first offense, I highly recommend it. Nothing serious. Nothing's going to hurt anyone. Just petty stuff. Dumb shit. Go for it. You only get one chance. If, if you have it in you, you better do it now because I have it in me and if I do it, I'll, I'll go to prison. Luckily, I got it out of my system when I was a teenager, but it's still there. Imagine if I didn't. I wouldn't be doing this podcast. I'd be in prison. Um, fast forward to a couple of weeks ago. I want to do something stupid. Me being the enabler I am, happily agreed. And when asked for suggestions of what to do... I said I wanted a Kuminya sign. Love that. So at 11 p.m., we drove one and a half hours to this backwater town, tried to steal a Crime Stoppers sign, and failed. Then we stumbled across an old train station that was no longer in use. I happened to have the right fitting uh, for a hex screw, and lo and behold, I am now the new owner of a Kuminya sign. I've attached pictures. Snitching on himself, I love it. Obviously, this is why he's, he's covered himself up. That's a, that's a hectic tool. I love... Dude, I want that sign. That's awesome. Yeah, they just racked it. And now it's in his bedroom. That's And that's really... I approve of that. Petty crime. That's great. We've all done it. And if you haven't, you haven't lived. So at 11 p.m., like uh, some some uh, chick, she brought a, a, a Lewis Street sign that, that she stole to my show and gave it to me. It's on my shelf. I'm looking at it right now. Fond memory. You know, um, that's that she has, and then also I have for receiving the sign. You, you, every if you didn't steal a sign when you were younger, you didn't live. Um. So we stole a Kuminya sign. Um. The next day, I get another message from my friend saying that the drive out of town with him, realizing we just got away with it, was one of the best highs of my life. Oh yeah. Absolutely, it is. And is now suggesting we steal from stores. Eh, I'm all for a good one, but I'm worried of accidentally setting him down a path he probably shouldn't go. Any suggestions on what to do? Yeah, so, uh, I went down this path. Absolutely, you've come to the right place. And I, I will be real, uh, I, didn't, I didn't stop. Uh, I, someone else stopped me. Uh, and that what, the person that stopped me wasn't a friend... It wasn't a bystander. It wasn't a, a, a person close to me in my life or a lover or my parents. It was the police. Uh, that's who stopped it. Uh, because uh, we went on a bit of a spree after a house party. Me and the boys smashed a lot of things. Literally a trail of destruction on the way home. My friend got hit by a car and then the police were called because we uh, absolutely absolutely destroyed the inside of a house at a house party. And it was great fun. And I don't regret it for a minute. And there were victims in that crime. Uh, but I but I, I thoroughly look back on it as, as a fond memory. And I stopped when the police got involved. So uh, while you have come to someone with a lot of past experience with exactly this, I don't really know how to stop your friend. Um, I would say that uh, you should... Look, I don't know about stealing from stores. I don't like that. I'm more like funny vandalism, smashing something and running away insurance will pay for it type crime that's what i'm into um so i look i would just say hey man last night was a lot of fun uh and getting away with it was awesome but if you're looking for thrills i think we can channel that energy somewhere else join a fighting gym obviously the dude this is i think this is this is why a lot of dudes get roped up into this stuff because there is no like natural outlet for the testosterone and and aggression and fucking oh, I want to prove myself energy that a lot of young men 
are like full of, especially when they become independent and they want to fucking leave their mark on the world. And I suppose girls as well, but I wouldn't know. I'm not, I don't have a pussy. Um, and I think that fighting martial arts is a great way to get it. Cause there's still risk factor, like anything with risk, fucking rock climbing. Uh, I don't know, parkour, anything where you could hurt yourself or get hurt or fucking achieve something, channel it there. That's what I would recommend is, is like as corny as it sounds, that type of energy is, is conquering energy and oh, I want to fucking do something energy and it can be directed in a, in a really, really destructive and negative space and I've seen that happen and I've seen boys go to prison over it or it can be directed in a positive thing. I mean, that's that's where I directed my destructive fuck the world energy into comedy. That's why I like shit stirring. That's why I like telling uh, controversial jokes. That's why I like doing what I do is I took that energy that was being wasted and thrown at uh, innocent people's cars and the inside of their homes and I directed it onto social media and now I'm a menace there uh, and it's now my job and I, I feel like I'm contributing positively to society but it could, you know it's up for debate depending on who you ask. That's what I would say is uh, the man seems to want to leave his mark uh, and he can even leave that in a positive way or a negative way, uh, ultimately, it's not your problem. Uh, that's another thing I would say is don't let people like this drag you into their shit because you can either, you should help try and help the man and give him some advice and try and direct it in a positive space. If that doesn't work, don't let him drag you the other way. You know, if he doesn't take your advice, that doesn't mean you have to follow him on the downward spiral. That you should look after your friends and you should try your best to help them out, but you should also be realistic and understand that if you can't help them, they will drag you down with them. And you need to make a decision on when or when you should cut that tie, if that is happening. Um, but that's, yeah, that's my advice, dude, is, is just go, hey man, that was really fun, but I don't want to end up with a record and I don't think it should be something that we do regularly. Uh, I think we should try this thing instead. Why don't we try fighting? Why don't we try something active with risk? Uh, whatever you think he and you would enjoy is what I would recommend uh, because that's kind of how I directed my uh, destructive energy was I didn't get rid of it. Uh, I still have it. I just channeled it. Yeah? Makes sense? All right. That's where I'm going to leave it. Thank you for watching uh, or listening. <laughs> uh, sorry about no audio. That'll be fixed next week, I believe. And uh, I will talk to you next Sunday. I, sin I sincerely hope you have a shit one. Send an email to podcast at loosebeers.com if you need some life advice. And get your tickets at loosebeers.com. I want to see you in Melbourne. Two weeks from now, 24th of March is opening night. That's not even two weeks. That's 10 days. Fuck. See you there. Have a shit one.